the shuba, the season of repentance, and uh, the Lord has a pleasant surprise for all of us. Uh, we will be hearing uh, a message that comes from heaven through Pastor Compoy. Okay, for all the, those of you who do not know Pastor Compoy, he is uh, a very faithful pastor to a praiser, actually. He is a praiser of our God. He is a worshiper. He established the Christian Music House in Singapore in uh, year 2000. When we were reading this, uh, Sister Nora said, um, in the last 2,000 years. I go, oi, nauna pa kay Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, um, he, he, is, uh, he views his business as a ministry to serve the body of Christ. Actually, he has been serving the body of Christ in the Philippines for so long. In fact, he was the one who brought some um, kites over to the Philippines so that God is going to reign over the Philippines. Uh, we know that our enemy is up there in the atmosphere. And even now, uh, the Lord is showing us that there are a lot of things that we have to pray about because uh, it has been gloomy for almost how many days? Uh, 10, 10 days, 11 days already since August. Oh no, this is the 21st. Right on the start of the season of Teshuba, it started uh, becoming gloomy. And I asked the Lord about it. And sabi ng Lord sa akin, it's the flying scroll. Oh, where the cur curses are over the land of the Philippines. That is why the season of the Shiva, we must all come together and pray. Pray about the ills of our government, every institution that we have here that is so ingrained with corruption. Oh, so uh, we have to be real. We have to be um, alert strong and alert to bring down all this um, darkness in our atmosphere. So, uh, Pastor Kompuo is the author of the Shofar Covenant book in four different languages, in English, traditional Chinese, Bahasa, Indonesia, and Tagalog. So, meron tayo mababasa ngayon na maiintindihan ninyo na maigi because it is in our own language. He is uh, instrumental in providing some churches here in the Philippines with menorah. Uh, we also have one here in Brain New Wine and Oil, pero nandun siya sa taas. Um, he, he, he was the one who brought, how many of them? Seventeen. It was supposed to be uh, given to every region, right, Pastor Kapoy? Um, I hope that those menorahs are lighting up the whole of the Philippines. Uh, he is also, he distributed shofars to the youth here in the Philippines. Um, he gave us, I think, 20, 20, 21 uh, shofars. And our very compassionate uh, pastor gave some of them because there were some churches that were really hungry for shofars to blow. Because they were seeing so many churches already blowing the trumpets and they did not have one. So our pastor, who is very generous, gave some of them. But some of them were left to us in our uh, outreaches. Uh, we have also some outreaches here in Manila. So we gave some of them there so that they can blow it in their churches and in their homes. Then we also, he also has been involved with the evangelistic ministry of Jesus Reigns under the leadership of Gina Osmeña in Cebu, Luneta in Japan. Uh, we once went with uh, Pastor Kompoy also to John Willen's uh, congregation in Israel. Uh, I think that was uh, how many years ago? I, I don't remember anymore. Okay. 
five years ago. So he's the first to use kites, fly, kite flying as tools for evangelism. So that is our speaker today, a very talented man from Singapore and is now a Lolo, grandfather to two grandchildren, huh? grandbabies. That is why her wife, her beauty's wife, cannot come with us, come to the Philippines, because he, she is taking care of the little ones. Ayan. So, without much ado, I would like to call Pastor Kampoy to start the ball rolling. <laughs> I will need the uh, projection. Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Hello. Just want to uh, update you a little bit. Um, Pastor Oro was mentioning that I have a ministry for Christian music. How's it? Was something very long ago. It was actually a bookshop that I sell books and CDs online. That was before I really come into ministry. But I kept it running because that's where at least I can sell some things, that, like the shofar, like some books. And um, my ministry now is actually a ministry for Open Heavens. Uh, that's where I have a fellowship of uh, brothers and sisters that come together, uh, that believe in the things that God has called me to do. And out of this fellowship, Apart from going to the nations, we have actually another ministry in the fellowship that is to oversee a dwelling place. Um, a little sanctuary that we have been trying to enthrone God to worship around the clock. But uh, I do overseeing this place if I'm not traveling, uh, if I'm not doing anything else. So that's the update. And um, we thank God too for our fellowship, the things that God asked us to do, especially prophetically, He gave us insight about we can actually lift up His name, we can make proclamation with kites. Uh, kites are simply banners that can fly. And something that um, came up in 2010, and in which um, I'm glad to um, be given this um, insight with things like that, especially, you know, this days, especially uh, this whole year have you been giving about terror kites in Israel and now they use kites for the wrong way and I feel it because I understand what kites can do can really um, lift you up but here it's been used the wrong way anyway we are here today uh, concerning the launch of this book in Tekalo which I uh, understand from the program we'll do it after lunch but for now is to really tell you more about the shofa um, you don't have to really take down notes um, for what I'm going to share with you because you will find that inside this book. Okay, uh, So I will talk more about the book launch and uh, how significant it is for us to be launching it um, today. Okay, So just a show of hands. How many of you here blow shofar? Can I see your hands? Yeah, good. And for those of you who are not blowing shofar, I hope that through this workshop you will have the desire and be inspired that you should um, really own one. Okay. Um, this book that I'm launching is a translation of an English book that I already published in way back three years ago. And um, so if you want the English book, you can also get hold later on as I'm going to show you how. So this is the book. Um, which I want to just um, acknowledge. Um, remember, will you please stand? This is the man that helped me translate this book, okay? Yeah. So, yeah. And that's why he is here. I think you must come because I'm going to launch this book today. And so, um, it's not written by me. It's, it's written by me, but translated by him, okay? And I trust that his translation is good, okay? Yeah. Now, um, since this is about shofar, I want to go into some very basic about shofar 
so that you and I really um, can comprehend exactly what the scripture tells us about the significance of this instrument. Um, if you look at our modern day Bible translation, you often will find, um, you won't find the word shofar, because shofar is actually a Hebrew word. You find it translated like trumpet, sometimes it be a bit more specific, they mention ram's horn. So if you were to really look at the scripture, uh, especially looking at the original Hebrew text, then you find that they ask uh, a Hebrew text by the word called Shofar, if you're using a strong concordant and strong number 7782. And this is where it is defined as a ram's horn uh, or a horn. And it's usually made from um, the horn of a ram, some type of a sheep. But this day, because uh, since ever since the diaspora of God's people, in some parts of the world, they're not able to get hold of a sheep or the ram's horn, then they make use of whatever animals that are kosher, they are clean. They use a horn in place of a ram's horn. And so that's why this day, your mountain goat, you have an uh, antelope deer horn, like the one I'm having right in front, that's a deer horn. Okay? But really, you find that very often the Bible is very specific, is that of a ram's horn. So just now from, um, uh, just let me go. So this is a rap song, okay? Um, some of you, you actually might be holding a goat horn, huh? <laughs> Not the rap song. You must be able to tell the difference. This is a rap song. It came from an animal like that. Okay? And it has to be removed, remove the cartilage inside, and there's actually no hole here. This is a solid piece. They have to bore a hole right inside and uh, to make it into an instrument with a ramp song like this. Okay? And then as for this, very popular this day because many like the sound of this. It sounds really like a trumpet. And um, this is what it comes in. It came from from a deer form, okay, a kudu, especially the greater kudu, yeah. So uh, this is the shofar that we have these days, and then you have another word in Hebrew, which is um, a reference that we get from Numbers ten two that tells us Moses will make two trumpets of silver. So this is what a silver trumpet looked like. Because if we compare the sound of the silver trumpet, the ram's horn, the silver trumpet is a more musical instrument, and that's why it's, it is really used in worship. So in the ancient times, they don't have bath, it's just really one solid piece of silver trumpet. So I have a silver trumpet. Uh, this is my son, not my eldest son. You really have two sons, okay? So that's why my wife is not here looking after his uh, two sons. Um, and he. This is what a silver trumpet was sound like, okay? So, whereas a ram tone is very different, very like sound like pride of animal. And uh, so uh, that's why uh, the temple priests, they use a lot of this in worship. And another word that you find in Hebrew that tells us something to do with the trumpet is so word for teruah is defined as a shout, a blast, a war, an alarm, blowing, blowing the trumpets, joy, jubilees, joyful sound, resounding sound, shout, shouts of alarm, shouts of joy, war, cry. So that's why if you just rely on the English translation, you might miss this. But when you compare with the Hebrew text, you see the word Teruah, you know it got to do with the blowing of the shofar or the trumpets. So there are, uh, to tradition now, there are different type of shofar call. Um, so these days you hear the Jewish people, they will blow something like what they call tekiya, which is a long blast uh, uh, with one or two tones. And if you can read musical notation, it will look something like this. Okay. And what happens is just the key here sounds like a trumpet. And my understanding to me, when I hear the key wind blow, it sounds like you're making an announcement to welcome the arrival of the king. So it sounds like this. Okay. 
And then you have another poem called Chivalry, which is three blasts from a lower tone to a higher tone. Now, the chivalry catch your attention. It's, to me, it's like a, a trumpet call to worship. It sounds like this. Does it catch your attention? Okay? Yeah. So, then you have a taruba. It's a nice staccato note blown in succession. And this staccato uh, piercing sound is like an alarm, sound like an alarm. So very often it is used in the sound of war and victory. Now you notice just now when we were singing, there will be victory in the camp at the shout of El Shaddai. Did you hear the alarm being blown? So, especially when you're going to worship a song that talk about war, about victory, alarm, then you should really blow like an alarm like this. Okay, very quick succession. Okay. And then finally, in the tradition of Chofa Po, they have one that called the Kiel Kodola, which is held as long as possible. Okay. So it will be just in play like this. you how towards the end. Okay, you want to learn? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, why did I entitle this book, The Sound of Covenant? Okay. Because if you look at the Jewish people, whether it's a menorah, or uh, whether it's a shofar, or the menorah, the things that have been used in the Jewish people, that they keep it to this day as a part of the tradition, part of the culture, part of their very identity, it's because of all the race, uh, all the different people grew in the world. Only the Jewish people have a covenant with God. God did not make a covenant with us Chinese, or with you Filipinos, or the Indians, or the Malay. Only the Jewish people. And they have a unique covenant. So whatever things that are associated with them has this bearing but that it reminds God that of their covenant relationship with him. So likewise, it, since this is an instrument that you use to make a sound, the sound of it will remind God that he has a covenant with the Israelites, who will remind the Israelites, the Jewish people, they are special people. They are a people of God. And we see this in Genesis 22. You remember the story and how God told uh, Abraham to offer Isaac on Mount Moriah? And when God saw the heart of uh, Abraham, he stopped him from sacrificing his son Isaac. And there was a ram. The horn was caught in the bush. And that ram became a sacrifice. Okay? Now, this is how, to this account, uh, the ram song always reminded the Jewish people of the special covenant promise God made with Abraham. Now, can you see that the Arabs do not have this shofar in the tradition? The Arabs believe it is Ishmael. But how do we know it's not Ishmael, but it was Isaac in the story? Because of the shofar. You see how significant is the shofar? The sound of the shofar is a testimony. Who was offered all now? Not Ishmael, but Isaac. Okay. 
So this is a very powerful truth. When you blow the shofar, you're proclaiming the truth of the story of Genesis 22. And then you remember when the Israelites finally came out of the exodus of uh, um, Egypt, they were brought finally to Mount Sinai and God entered a covenant with the commonwealth of Israel. You see, our God is a God who made a covenant with Abraham, he did it with Isaac, he did it with Jacob, he must also do it with the whole entire assembly. And this took place on Mount Sinai, recorded for us Exodus 19, and remember what happened in the story here? They were told, when you hear the long blast of the ram's horn, come up. So how did God make a covenant with the twelve tribes? True, the sound of the shofar. Now another example I can give to you, you remember this king called King Asa in 2 Chronicles 15. 